Logan Kane here, and this is episode 6 of Shadowgate. Last time, we took out the she-wolf. Well, the she-werewolf, I guess. We got a couple of keys, so let's let's back on down and see what's going on. An unexpected shiver climbs your spine at the sound of a nearby unearthly cry. Huh. Light breeze. What was in here? I don't remember. Ah, uh, yes. That was the dark room. Alright, let's back up some more. And some more. Alright, we're back here. Now, there was another door up here. Or do we want to try this door? I'm going to try this one. Even though it's going to take a while to get up there. Now, I did want to say a little bit of Maddie here. You may notice that when I do my cuts, it's very jarring cuts. And I just wanted to say, I'm not really doing that because I'm too lazy to deal with it. I'm doing that because... Well... You guys don't want to hear a beep. You guys don't want to see a flash of light. You know, We're just going to skip it. And it's not worth fast-forwarding for. You have to use both hands to turn the key in the stubborn lock. Once the door is unlocked, you toss the key aside. Alright, so we got a door unlocked. Awesome. Let us proceed. Oh, Jesus. That actually scared me for some reason. <laughs> Was not expecting something to fly across my screen. Not even a jump scare. Anyway, from this vintage... There I go with anyways. You have a panoramic view of the... Did stuff just suddenly appear? Anyway, view of Gatekeeper Mountains. A large winged creature soars and to and fro on the wind. Currents even as a storm rages in the sky. Well, that's a good point. There's this giant storm, and yet there's this bird that can just fly through it without an issue. Doesn't look like there's anything here for me, though. I get the feeling the bird will actually fly me to another tower or something. Let's see what Yorick has to say. Tomar's winged beast flies the sky, guarding an artifact of great power. He must have some way of summoning the creature to him. A spell, maybe? Do I have new spells? I think I have a new I have Flumoris. I haven't used that one yet. You picture the glyph in your mind and draw in power with a gesture. You release a spell, Daisy. Oh, okay. A large wyvern shoots across the sky, nearly clipping the edge of the tower with a powerful stroke of its wings. Yeah, I thought maybe that spell would call the wyvern, but whatever. We'll just fly on back. I don't think you really need me to tell you what's going on here. And I feel like I don't have anything to say right now. You insert the key and turn and reward it with the satisfying sound of the door unlocking with a pleased grunt. You throw away the key. Alright, shall we? I really love the combat in this game. That's something I can say. The combat is quite amazing. Just think, it's it's not an RPG battle. It's a strategy, pure strategy battle. Ooh, another one of these women's. Yep, it's saying the same thing as the other one. And I'm probably going to bow my head briefly. Now I'm going to check out this door. It's open. What lies beyond? Why do I feel like I'm going to die now? An odd sensation. <laughs> Go figure. Tingles just as the edge of your consciousness. You sense there is a magic afoot in this chamber. Oh, we have a cup. What is... Oh, I see. There's like apparition furniture or something. Something large sits low to the floor towards the back of the room. Circular piece on the wall appears to be... A circular piece of something appears to be mounted to the wall. Fumble a bound, trying to find a way to interact with it. What about this guy? Can't interact with it. Can I set it on fire? 
You wave the lit torch around, trying to get a better look at what might be hidden here. Hmm. What if I use my dirk? Flail about with the dirk, attacking nothing in particular. Huh. Well. What about this stake? <laughs> nothing happened when he uses the stake on the thing. Okay. Let's go back to the F2. We got this circular thing that glows. Which, without this glow, I would never have seen any of the Ooh, look at that, a scroll. The item seems to crackle under your fumbling fingers. So, perhaps I need to cast some sort of spell. That ain't doing it. Come on. What do you have to say, York? There's magic at work here. One of your spells might shed some light on some things. Oh, right! My new spell. My one that sounds like it's supposed to make light. Flumoris. I don't know why I'm thinking light now. But ever since I found the dark room. A brilliant white light flashes, followed by a strange, wavering effect that illuminates the phantom objects within the room. There is a magical glamour at work in these quarters. York whispers, Something's not right here, boy. I smell a powerful enchantment. Gee, really? Alright, what do we got here? A, the ghostly half-seen desk looks to be carved by a fine craftsman. Rifle to the drawers and find nothing. After a few tries, you manage to take the scroll. That's... That's great. Well. Let's open it up. Yes, yes, yes. Click to continue. You alternate between blinking and rubbing your eyes, unsure if the disappearance of the objects has to do with your senses or the dissipating effects of the spell. Okay. Yeah, yeah, something's not right here. You read the words... Spotix. You see a glyph. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see if... I want to cast Flamoris again. Can I set the carpet afire? <laughs> you mishandle the lit torch, which drops. I want to use this thing. I feel like I should be doing something with it. The Divine? I already forgot what I got. Oh yeah, that's right, I got the spell. Sparks. Let's see what it looks like. A bright flash of light fills the space above your head, looking vaguely familiar to you. Well, it's weird. Colors, confound senses. Let's cast it on myself. Spell you cast explodes in a nice pyrotechnic display. You brush off a couple of sparks and carry with your adventure. Right, right, right. Disappearing effects of the spell. Well, now I want to go to the dark room and cast that spell. Oh, yeah, I can go up more. And a torch! <laughs> Drop the torch in your satchel. Sounds weird. Um, hmm. Thick strands of roots wind down the stairs above. The strange phenomenon seems to be growing right in front of your eyes. Well, we can't have that. Let's cut those dark... You hack the greenery, but whatever your weapon lands, roots immediately repair themselves. What strange new magic is this? One that needs to be set on fire! Vegetation seems to swell as the same... However, the roots do not catch fire. Okay, time for another one. Hello, this must be the bard's room. Sound is amplified in the circular chamber, filled with musical instruments. It's a flute. Use the flute on myself. Play the flute, creating a complicated haunting melody that overcomes the oppressive pale within the chamber. Yeah, I'm gonna take that. Six strings run the length of a short-necked lute. 
prize position for any barter. Use use loop. Oh god, I can do both at the same time. I'm talented. You play the loot. It's music's... Blah, 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 blah. Let's grab it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna play the drum. Employing your fingers and palms, you beat out a complicated finger, one that echoes throughout the chamber. I can't take that. Can't take that either. You strum the strings, picking out an odd haunting melody. The music rises into the chamber, rapping in an odd fashion. Man, I have some talent. I'm playing like six instruments at once. Yeah, I wonder how valuable it is. Blah, blah, blah. All right. Oh, lordy, I wouldn't be me if I didn't try it. Yep, yep, yep. Crumbling mortar. But then, let's wear that hat. Swap the helm for a hat. You're not completely sure if this is an upgrade. What do you have to say, York? No, oh, just generic. All right, let's, let's leave the bard room. And we're going to go up here. Thick strands of roots wind down the above... Oh, wait, no. I wanted to walk. You trip over the roots and as you head up the stairs. Massive twisted roots engulf the tower landing. The thick roots originate from the doorway to your left. Yeah, same stuff. I don't think I'm ever going to need to use the grappling hook again. So, can I... Oops. Ooh. It was able to do that. The overgrown roots men seem to immediately want to grow back. I have a feeling I'm going to get trapped in this room. Hello. This small chamber has literally been engulfed by roots and vines of all types that stem from a single point in the ceiling. You wonder what is up there and resolve to do something about it. Yet I make no mention of this wizard that's in front of me. The body of Lachmere the Timeless floats above the floor. His expression is a fascinating mix of calm and concentration. He grimaces every now and then as if in pain. So I guess this is where he's hiding out. A barrier of energy flashes around Lachmere, preventing you from dis disturbing his otherworldly state. Well, let's invoke him. As you attempt to cast your spell in Lachmere, blah, 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 Okay. F2. So we got the light above. I have a feeling I'm going to end up killing this guy, whether I mean to or not. Lift your eyes to the ceiling, your jaw dropping in awe. You have found the source of the strange flora that has engulfed this room. Perhaps you should step in for a closer look. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Or I'm going to have a cutscene. Nope, not a cutscene. Stand up on your toes to get a closer look at the center of the roots. A mesmerizing mass of roots and vines. That's a word. From the ceiling. From the center of the ceiling. At the heart of the tangled confusion, a golden artifact glows with calming power. Golden piece of the golden piece of wood pulsates with an ancient power. Without doubt, the roots you've seen thus far originate from this artifact. Okay. I'm gonna take that. You pull the golden thorn from amongst the tangled roots. The artifact resists at first, but then seems to accept your touch easily, dislodging from the vein, then enshrouds it. I don't think we have anything else to do up here. Let's back off. Well, do you have anything? Nope. So there's also this. The root choked opening was once a window. Outside, you will you see the okay. And this one. The opening in the dense roots leads to a small nook. Well, Sally Forth, eh? You drop to your knees and crawl through the grasping roots to a nook beyond. Amidst the tangle of roots and vines lies a small nook housing a desk, and various scholarly paraphernalia. 
You throw the latch and open the chest and find two scrolls, a key, and a book. These you place in your bag. And these we'll take a look at. I'm almost full. I wonder if this game is almost over already. I mean, it was a Nintendo game for, for what it's worth. You read the handwritten note. Timeless one, I have done what you have asked. My travels have taken me to the north, where I have found a woman from the family Ornas. Her great-grandmother can be traced back to the meeting you speculated. A secret relation with the High One some 300 years past. This woman has taken the name Kuthigar. A strong coincidence? Or have we found the one you seek? The letter is signed with a mark in the shape of the letter W. So we have an L and a W. You read the words on the scroll. One particular word says up in the breast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feels like some sort of rite of passage. Falling to pieces, so I take it accidentally. I can't drop things, so. Open the book to a well read passage. How can I tell that? Read an annotated passage. The dawning of the age shall pretend to change to the powers of the earth and the air. The rain shall end for all that walk the ways. Foremost amongst this is blah, blah, he who is set above all overs. He that he holds the key and wields the power of the stars. He stands against all and all stand against him. Great and terrible his might. We struck our bargain. I would conceal the well of holding by constructing a huge edifice over it, imbued with magics and living defenses beyond phantoming, built at the junction of all ley lines, the origin, the place with power beyond measure so the warder could perform his task. I still do not know who this old being was, nor how it came by its purpose, what entity put it on this path, and what purpose do I fulfill in this drama? I guess that will... will? That well might have something to do with something. That's in front of the castle, the interior castle. The neat handwritten entry fills the page from edge to edge. My efforts have been rewarded as I have found the one. It is left to me to set him on his pass. This I know. The magic I must attempt is formidable, and I have little acquaintance with astral conjunctions. Though taxing, I need to remain in the stasis until the task is exhausted. My defenses will have to hold. The thorn has proven to be a valuable artifact and has thwarted Kaus' attempts to reach me. Alright. Wood construct. Table is far too large to move around, and I think that would be everything in this room. Well. That's full now. What about spells? Yeah, nothing works. Let's get out of here. I want to know if the roots grow back now. Immediately repair themselves, okay. I don't remember what was over here. Oh, right, the ghost room. Well, eh, let's go up the let's go up the main row, main hall. See if I can get in here now. I have all this stuff. I don't know what to do with it. Is this the only key I have? Ah, it worked. Awesome. Well, this is terrifying. I'm probably going to die now. Although the mural on the back wall is amazing. The ordnance chamber is dominated by a beautiful mosaic design on the wall. A large hole has been blasted in the floor. 
leading down into darkness. What about this figure? The mummified figure is dressed in regal garb with the design of a lion on it. You have little doubt that this is the legendary doomed king, Dragon, from the ancient courts of Stormhaven. You glance over the page and read from an entry. The dwarves are proving difficult. I have pushed them day and night, excavating as my lord commands, but I fear that they may all perish before we reach our goal. I've commanded Chief Gorka to bring us goblins, as I may resort to using those brutes for this work. Hmm. There's a lot going on here. <clears throat> One look at the cracked ribcage, you should realize just how frail it is. Anything in there? Use ribcage on what? Use it on... The silent dead visage looks at you in defiance. Thoroughly cowed, you stop what you were doing and step back away from the king. Once regal statue stands broken badly. Alright, well, do a quick save, and I can't resist. You don't quite understand why, but a sixth sense warns you against torching the king. Okay. What about torching this guy? And what about knocking this thing out? You haul off and strike the statue, cracking the stone with a satisfying smack. Let's do it again. Yeah! Strike the statue hard with a single roundhouse blow. Why do I do a roundhouse? It teeters and falls, followed by the sound of several heavy wooden ceiling beams falling from the ceiling. Okay. York whispers, you'll be wanting to keep quiet. Dugan here was a right terror in real life. I'm sure his death just made him angrier. Can I burn the mural? Even though it's pretty? Okay. Well, it's a mosaic. Well, what the hell? This is terrifying. With a deep breath, you scramble down the beam and into the shaft below. Congratulations, you've entered the Spelunker achievement. The cave walls seem to be closing in. A momentary feeling of panic grips you as you ponder all the rock overhead. Well, F2 doesn't seem to be helping too much. I can barely see these things glow. What's that? That looks pretty. Well, I guess I can go back up, right? Oh, shit. A final bout of pain shoots through your body. After a moment, it passes and you feel much better. Perhaps the Banshee curse has run its course. The Ordnance Chamber, blah, blah, blah. That was terrifying. I just wanted to make sure I could go back before I start going in these caves. A loud thump echoes through the caves. You pray fervently that your path forward is not blocked. What about over here? You know what the cave tunnels twist into? Eh, let's go that way. I'm pretty sure that way is going to get me killed. Veins of quartz and crystal run through the rock walls in this tunnel. I'm just being quiet while I carefully scan, trying to find something. Looks like there's nothing here. Guess I'll have to go back. I find it odd that stuff is falling in this castle. I figure if things are falling, they would have all fallen by now. This is an ancient castle, right? This is probably one of those situations. It could be your imagination, but you swear you saw something large moving within the opening. This could be one of those situations where I have to go certain directions or I die. Novice adventurer. A chill grabs hold of you, clawing its way up your spine like you're being watched. Strange hole. Here's some scraping and skittering. And a strange hole. Well, I can't go that way. I can't go that way. Well. Oh. Shit. As you make your way across the, the cave, a scraping sound brings you to a standstill. Two creatures resembling gargoyles slither from the small cave openings on either side of the cavern. The beasts sniff the air in anticipation of a fresh marshal. You. 
Yorick. They don't look so tough. Let's see how they like the taste of cold steel. Alright. You jump in and stab the strange creature with the dirk. The snar the s this startles the beast enough to retreat back into its hole. The second one quickly follows, apparently spooked by its companion's behavior. <clears throat> okay. So that's what those holes are. Well, let's sally forth. Having no interest in another encounter, you hurry across the stone floor and out of the small cave. A series of hastily dug tunnels are held together with old and rotting timbers. Well, that's good. Let's see, a scroll, a stone tablet, and two crystals. Paging through the inventory. Okay, so I guess I have a... Paging. You're nearly knocked off your feet as a tremor runs through the cave. You read the carefully scrawled words on the scroll. Brother Andon, forgive us. We know not the location of the place of power that you spoke of. We continue to search the caverns and ancient chambers below, having uncovered several areas containing artifacts from a time long past. With these places, what these places mean we cannot tell. It's signed with a T. What was it? L, W, and T? Might have to look over them all again. Who knows? Might cave in. Drips. Deeper into the caverns. Eh, let's go down this way. Go! That's terrifying, too. The intense heat of this room makes it difficult to breathe. Broken and cracked, this stone statue portrays a large dragon like creature. Its wings spread, strange words which read, Motori Rush are etched in the rock. You feel like you've seen it once before. Well, I don't think there's anything else I can do there. I'm going to go in here and I'm probably going to die. The red glow from the cavern walls give you the feeling that you may have entered some sort of netherworld. This is just a maze at this point. Disoriented, you look about you, wondering if you've been in this cave before. Perhaps you're going around in circles? Oh, yeah. We're back at the beginning, aren't we? No. We are not. But this looks... I mean, realistically, this is the same, same map as before, but... Just a different way of entering it. Huh. <clears throat> well, backtracking time. I guess we'll go this way. Sally forth. Despite the lack of a breeze, you catch a whiff of some musky animal. You are doubly cautious as you continue your explorations. Well, I guess if we're gonna go spelunking. Hastily constructed beams, surely cut from the woods within the gatekeeper, hold up the rock overhead ceiling. <clears throat> well. Hastily constructed... Oh, yeah. This chamber is no different than all the other caves you've been in before. Noxious smell rises from the bubbling tar pit in the center of this cage, assaulting your senses. You howl in pain as the boiling tar comes in contact with your flesh. So can I get over there? Okay. Timber, some rotten, some strong. Brace the shaft, blah, blah, blah. Guess I'll de-spelunk a bit. Series of haphazardly wood beams. The dark cave, replete with echoing sounds, seems to be closing in from all sides. You reach for a handhold as a noticeable vibration criminates this cavern. Am I going to fight a dragon? No doubt the work of the dwarves. This passage through the rock has been carved from solid stone. Just 
curious to what the map looks like. Not ex not exceptionally helpful. You'd think it would help to have a map, but it doesn't always. Let us look in. Without provocation, a wave of panic washes over you. You shake your head, wondering if some terrible fate would overcome you should you enter that tunnel. The air from this tunnel is stifling, even. Although hastily dug, dwarven handiwork is still evident in these tunnels. And we're back out. You notice the shaft is set with sandy cave floor. A cloying, sweet smell wafts up from the depths below. Alright, well, we went underground, and we got out. So, that's it for episode 6 of Shadowgate. And since I saved it here, we're going to go back down and go into that other cave to see what kills us. Before I leave. A huge chasm cuts the chamber in two. On the far side, you see a tunnel, no doubt leading deeper into the labyrinths below. Well, I thought for sure I'd die when I walked in here, because you even told me I would. Let's take a look at this pedestal. Going a little over time, but... Oh, great. Strange pattern on the ground, hoping for a closer look. Stone table. Table of sorts has been carved into a solid rock pedestal. Geometric pattern of the holes is oddly familiar. Not to me. But we're still going to call it here. Maybe we'll I'll mess around with this. Anyway, thank you for watching episode 6 of Paper Sorcerer. Enjoy. I did it! I finally said Paper Sorcerer. No! <laughs> Episode 6 of Shadowgate. Enjoy. I might actually wipe that entirely. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching Episode 6 of Shadowgate. Enjoy!